The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. You may be wondering why I'm standing here in a really weird pose. Well, that's because I'm being 3D scanned. Actually, come to think of it, this will print better, no overhangs. So what we're doing on today's episode is testing out the new 3D Systems Sense Scanner. It's a handheld scanner, as you can see, that you can use to make three-dimensional scans of objects and create easy-to-use STL files for your own printing purposes. We're going to find out the best way to use this scanner, try to use it on small objects, and print out the results on a 3D Systems Cube printer. So I've seen this thing make really good scans of people. But what I'd like to do with it is scan small objects. For instance, I might make a clay model, a large clay model, and scan it into a computer to make a 3D printable file that I could scale down, basically like a repeatable 3D object. So I think I'll try with this um, bobblehead of myself for starters. I'm kind of thinking like a turntable, like the bobblehead can rotate and this thing will stay in a fixed position to scan it. But what rotates? cool feature on this thing. It has a quarter inch tripod mount on the bottom of it, so we can actually just attach this and put it on our tripod. And then should we make a custom rig later, that'll come in handy too. Now the real trick with this device is keeping the object centered in its field of view. Now when you rotate something that should help, but the problem might be that it might actually track the background, not the object. So rotating the object may not work, so I guess we'll have to find out. See the crosshair shows you when the object is, you know, in its sight. And as you can see, it's kind of finicky with this object. Oh, we're also completely off that, completely off our rocker. So even though, you know, it's using um, IR, or whatever kind of grid it is to sense objects, I believe it's actually calculating its rotation around the object based off the background. So see, I'm rotating my guy, but the model isn't rotating. So I don't think a rotating platter will work with this. Or if it will, I'm not doing it right. But I think we should try something else. Okay, so we tried rotating the object and keeping this in a fixed position. That didn't seem to work out so well. I'm guessing that this actually has to see the geometry of the room change as well to help track its position. So we're gonna walk around this hat here and try to scan it. Rusty will hold the laptop and I will aim this at the hat. Again, it's very important to keep the object in the center of the screen. Okay, this scan's actually pretty good. Uh, we have the hat and it even has the indentation of the top. There's a few holes, but we should be able to auto heal that. Okay, so we learned a few things about this. It's important to keep this directly centered in your target. So I think we might actually tape this to the laptop for our next test. Also, um, it did a pretty good job of guessing what was gonna be underneath it, but this isn't really conducive to being a solid printed object. Uh, even when you solidified this, it kind of made a big mess. But this part solidified well. So our next test, I think we should hang something from the ceiling and go around that. That way we can get under it. We're going to attach the sense scanner directly to the front of this laptop in the center here. So as we record it, we can know that we're looking straight at the object. All right, let's do this. Now I just have to point the laptop at the object and it's a lot easier to keep it in the crosshairs. It colorizes the object you're scanning so you know what you're scanning. This worked pretty good. It gave us a nice flat bottom. I mean, this would basically 3D print 
I think we'll get a good print quality out of this because the STL file had a nice looking mesh. While that prints though, I want to try a different surface for this table to see if we can get a better separation from the background. Okay, so we're gonna test it with this piece of black Sintra and a bright colored object on the black Sintra. And I think this will also be nice because the sensor should see a nice square around it, which will give it a good idea of the um, geometry that surrounds the object. So let's try this. All right, let's see how we did. Here is the scan using a black base. And if you take a look here, you can see that it pretty much captured the black base as a shape, because it is a shape. So I'm thinking that a white background is actually a better way to go for whatever reason. I mean, you'd think that black would, you know, exclude more light, but apparently that's not the case. It could also have to do with how the infrared sensors work or however the sensor works in this thing i'm not quite sure the detail on the sensor oh, i'm sorry the detail on the multimeter itself is actually pretty good you can see the um the turn knob there and back here it's pretty good detail so i think we should change this to be white and then also make an arm that rotates around the object so we put the arm out here and the pivot of the arm will be directly under the object. So if you put the sensor on the arm, it will always be looking at the direct center of the object, which we have found is the key to getting good scans. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Okay, so STL files. Those are the things you actually export and send to your 3D printer. STL can stand for two things actually. Stereolithography, the process by which you make an object, or surface tessellation language. So there's two basic ways you might make a 3D object. You might design something parametrically, like extrude circles and squares into you know, dimensionalized objects. And that's good for making things like gears or you know, anything you wanna really build. Or you might scan an object like we're doing in today's episode. That's great for you know, strange organic shapes like a bear or a, you know, a clay model. But no matter how you design the object, it'll get turned into triangles eventually when it's sent to the printer. And that's kind of what you see on the screen here. Here's our object we designed, but if we turn it onto triangles, we can see the triangles that will actually make it up. So that's actually what the STL file is defining, the object as triangles, so it can be converted into slices for the 3D printer. Finding a suitable dance partner. Hmm, not so easy. Finding a community where 100,000 engineers, the latest innovations, information, answers, experts, and design solutions come together. Much easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback and building a better experience. We printed this part on the Cube 3D printer and it fits through this hole here on our 2x1 and spins freely. So we're going to put it into the table here. Rusty, could you yeah, wing nut that in place? So when he attaches the wing nut, it's going to attach this you know, clamp to the table, but the stick should still rotate around it. Uh, yeah, that's good. Are you secure? And yeah, we need to adjust it a little bit. But basically that means this will stay in place while this moves. So we put the sense scanner on that, which will give us a nice circular motion while keeping our object centered. Again, it'd be nicer if we could do this coming off the ceiling, but this was a lot easier to build. All right, let's try this out. Oh, that works great. And if we put the scanner here, it'll always be looking at the center of the object. We drew this up. This shows where the scanner is gonna go. So it can be low like this. And also you can get a high angle too, so you can get the top surface of the object. So you can see there's an arc here, or two arcs. We need to design this as a solid piece. And this will actually be what the sensor mounts to. And then that will mount to this board. So the sensor can be moved and also perhaps tilt it a little bit. And then this, it won't be this piece, it'll be a piece of wood, but it'll move with the rod. 
So I'll get that designed up, then we can finish this and see if it works. You might be wondering, why did Ben make one half of an Art Deco bird wing? Well, that's not actually what it is. It's actually the mount for the Sense Scanner. And uh, this part that Rusty's working on, thanks. The scanner will attach to this, and then this will ride along the arc to get different angles of the object. So we basically have to attach this to this and bolt this to our arm, and that's pretty much it. So let's do it. Not too bad. So this isn't really meant to move up and down while you're doing it. It's basically so you can have one position and then two positions so you can lock it. But it is kind of fun to move it back and forth. All right, so the reason I'm using Velcro here is if we put the scanner here and use the tripod mount, the tripod mount would go into the wood and obviously we want it to be able to go as low as possible. That's why I'm going to Velcro the scanner to this. It just makes it simpler and then we don't have to worry about spacing down here. Uh, where is the scanner? Now I know what you might be thinking. Oh no, the bolt is too high. But when you have two layers of this super awesome stuff, it will be about 0.2 inches, which is higher than the head of the bolt, which is probably 0.188. Yep, see? If I ever mentioned how much I love industrial strength <laughs> Velcro. And here's the other trick. Here's the other trick of Velcro. Put the two pieces together and then press your object together. That way you know it's where you want it to be. Yeah, if you use enough of this stuff, sometimes you can't even take the thing apart. It's insane. Wow, listen to that crunch. <laughs> Make it square to the table just for the sake of sanity. There we go. I am an ancient fisherman sailing the seas. Okay, here's something I overlooked. There's too much material here, which gets in the way of its field of view. How's it look? Yeah, it looks like you can see that on here. It's blocking off. We raise up here where it's not a problem and we get better object detection. I mean, you can see this big white thing slide into view. I stuck this piece back in the laser and cut out this arc here. So now we have a good field of view. Kind of looks like an upside down machine gun clip, but whatever. So I think we're ready to do a test with this cool little Pac-Man machine from the early 80s. So Rusty and I, we're gonna enter the Olympics, the tandem rotating event. There's this, it's a new event. You rotate in a circle in tandem and we're gonna to totally get all the points. Okay, so we have a pretty good looking mesh there. We're going to export it to an STL file, send it to the printer and then see what it looks like. A little miniature version of this. Let's take a look at the resulting prints from our two best scams. Here is the Santa hat. Now this one we had hanging from the ceiling by a string. And we got the folds of the cloth really good. And the brim of the hat came through great. And you can see the different folds here. And even the tassel, which uh, didn't have any support material when we printed it, worked. <laughs> and had a nice flat bottom. So yeah, this was a hanging in the air scan. Here's the more complex object, the mini arcade machine. And the cool thing is the joysticks actually uh, scanned in pretty good and they also printed and we basically just use the default mesh heel. So we basically put no effort into cleaning these up and they still printed out good. The bottom of the arcade machine isn't quite as flat, but it was perfectly sufficient for our purposes. And even the overhang, see this is, it actually captured all the hollow cavity here and that printed out fine. It scanned well and printed fine. And what's interesting is there's a plastic flat bezel over the screen, but 
it actually scanned and got the depth of what was behind that plastic. So basically it'll scan through transparent plastics is what we found. Uh, it also got the ridges in the back. So yeah, it also made a little miniature arcade machine pretty good. Recap, here are the two best methods we found for using the scent scanner on smaller objects. The first was to hang the object from the ceiling and then scan around it. This had a good advantage of the object being completely separated from the background. It's not even set on anything. However, of course, you're limited by how much weight you can hang with monofilament or a thread. But we got a pretty good result. It was still tricky keeping the object in the center of the field of view. The best way that we found was our stable platform and rotating arm idea. The advantage of that was as you rotate the arm around, since the pivot point is right under the object, the sensor is always looking at the center of the object and thus it doesn't lose tracking. So uh, yes, these are the two ways that we would recommend. Uh, hopefully you can find your own cool way to scan objects with the 3D Systems Sense Scanner. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, I'm going to tear down the new Xbox One video game console so we can all see what's inside. There's been other teardown videos on the internet, but not by me. We'll see you then. by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> <laughs>